slightly not archaeological content, maybe. Maybe I'll do a bit because this might blend to another video. I'm on the soda farm next week, so this is Saturday night actual crimping content. I'm on the soda farm. Let me show a few of the tools I'm getting ready. Mostly crimpers. Let's talk about crimping properly. <laughs> Proper crimpers are only made by one firm. You know who that is. In my opinion, the only person I buy crimping heads on is Chambray. Yeah, Chambray, 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 Chambray. That's all I buy. Canalka good. There's a few of ones, but for me, it's got to be Chambray. Because from Craigle to Grave, you can buy the head off them, the dies off them, the head off them, the dies off them, the cutter off them. The lugs off them. This is even your collection. I've got a head that will cut through steel bar that big. As in steel bar that big. In the office, I've also got this head. This is the big... Look at that. That is a beast. That is the TC055, which can only cut up to 55 mil. The difference is, look at the girth on it. The blades in it are absolutely ginormous. It's a ridiculous cut. I think it'll cut through steel bar, copper bar, and all that. So I've got that one. I acquired that one with a thing, but... Why anyone bought that? I'm guessing to cut through steel wire armour and stuff like that, but that one ain't never going blunt or snapping. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's also ways a ton to put it down there. And I've got another G head that runs off an hydraulic pump, but let me take you for a couple of these and what these heads are for. I think this is the GT50 head, is it? Mm, this one's the... Oh, it's the RH50. That's the thin head. So that goes onto the pump, pump like that or, or the hydraulic source like that. Uh, that's the first head I bought. I bought that brand spanking new. Probably a bit of an error. You can get this stuff second hand, kicking around if you speak to the right people. It's going to fall off and make it look like a dick. And then it takes these dies. These are the dies for the RH50 head. And they're thin. Yeah, if you look at them, um, they're thin dies. And they also imprint a number in there. Look, that one is A7. And let me just talk to you about dies for a second. The, I call that the thin head, yeah? And I call that the G head. <laughs> The jihad, not the jihad, although jihad's quite cool, yeah? Jihad. Jihad. Jihad, la dukka dukka, jihad. Jihad. Oh, shit. Come on, Gary. Act. You have the power. Buck. Durka durka. Jihad. Oh, durka durka durka. You see, for example, that's a 120 die. That's a 120 die for a jihad. Jihad, la dukka dukka. That's a 120 die for a um, for the thin head. So you see it doesn't do as much crimping. So what will happen is I, I'm, I think a 120, if you look in the book, in the back of the chambray book, there's a guide. Hang on, I'll turn you around. So in the back of the chambray catalogue, because I'd buy my lugs off chambray, and I'd buy my dies off chambray, my crimps off chambray, because it's a package system. Yeah, I don't buy a shit when I feed about the crap. For the G-head, I think the G-head, as I'm not going to call it, I think that 120, you crimp it once, yeah? You don't crimp a lug down, it's bar as many crimps as you can get on. You crimp it up per the crimping chart. So with that head, I believe it's one. So you crimp it once with that. With the thin head, which is that one, ME1950, I think you do two or three crimps, but it'll tell you in the catalogue. I'll show you the catalogue next week, I'm taking it with me. Uh, or I'll show you the PDF of it. Or if this is on YouTube, I'll definitely be putting that in. But yeah, don't just crimp the fucking thing to oblivion. You crimp it as many times as it tells you in the catalogue related to the lug you're using and the die you're using and the head you're using and the pressure you're using. Crimping is a science, not just something you do. Here is the chambray catalogue. I've got a copy of it because I bought a stuff of them. But anyway, you get it digitally. You don't have to worry about it. For example, now you've got the AM lugs lot. So there's the AM lug, which is like a standard lug. I'm not telling you which lugs to use. There's all sorts of mad lugs in there, like the 4A4 ESR, which are your transformer mounting lugs. But an AM lug is pretty standard lug. It tells you there a little bit about the lug, the size, the stud size you get. So in 35, you can get 6, 8, 10, and 12. But in 185, you can get 10, 12, 14, 16, and 20 mils. Tells you all the dimensions of it there in relation to that table. Tells you all the details of the thing. That's the die reference. And there, it tells you which tools they've got that will crimp it. So I'll put a stud of that up now for you to ever know that because it's still be high quality for pause in the video. Let me move on to the back of the catalogue. <laughs> Shh. 
Sean Brady, enough mad shit and dollars and stuff like that. Look how many heads they've got. This might be quite an old catalog as well, but in the section of the back, my favourite bit is where all the copper stuff is. So here's your crimping heads. All your different crimping heads you can get. There's the G head lock. All the different ones, insulate ones, and all sorts of madness. So it's all listed there. Again, this is a PDF, you can just get your hands in, no problem. So it's got all the different crimping tools all the way through. Massive, huge heads. Jesus, that thing's big. What's that got to? What die size has that got to? Crimping force is 1,100 newton. It'll be an absolute beast. There's the cutters. There's one I've got. Uh, and some of the big, low light duty cutters. And then I actually own one of these heavy duty ones. I've shown it in this video, haven't I? Because size that bastard can that guy's hand. Where's the one I've got? I don't think it's in this catalogue because it's so new. I have to look at the... The one I've got is in the new... Oh, there it is. The TCO4N, which is like capable of cutting... 700 bar, someone would bring me now, wouldn't they? Anyway, that's the one that I've got. Here's the, the cutting table. So it'll cut like 18 mil of steel, 20 mil of steel if it's less than this, 45 mil of aluminium, and copper it'll cut like basically huge diameters. 45 mil, 50 mil, 45 mil, I think. But yeah, the old catalogue is here. The most important thing piercing heads look random. Oh no, there's my hydraulic cutting head, it's that one. Cuts 20 mil, anyway. Oh, no, I've got that one. I've got the TC055, which cuts, yeah, 55 mil of copper. Thought that was wrong. Thought that was wrong. 55 mil of copper, 20 mil of steel, 50 mil of aluminium. Anyway, it's a beast. Most important bit is this bit in the book. This is the die selection chart. So let's pick an AM look. We spoke about them earlier, look. And then here you've got the conductor that it'll take. So there you've got the conductor 35... 50, 70, 95, 120, 150, Tells you about the heads, hexagonals and indent ones. It tells you the tool you've got. So along here, so I've got the, the G head, which is the HT120 here. So if we go down here, look, and look at the lug. So I'll read my, under that blue line, that's your 35, your 50, your 70, your 95, your 120, your 150 and your 185 all require one crimp look. in that little dial there, look, it says, look, one crimp, one hexagonal crimp. I'm guessing if you turn over the page, it continues the AM. No, it doesn't. But yeah, you get it. That's how it works. So you come to this chart, you find out what lug you're using, what side you're using, you follow it along, and it'll tell you what to do. For example, that one look is two hexagonals, and that's what you need to maintain a system. And yeah. I put the thin head away because I'm not using it. It's more for tri rates, that. More for tri rates and thin cables and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's a thin head. I like to use that with uh, uh, bell mouth logs, which are the flared ones, the ones that flare out like that. You get straight ones like that, they're hard to get over the cable. The flared ones that do that are for going over tri rates, and that's the crimper I tend to use for them. So when I'm doing tri rates, super flexes, the more flexible cables in the workshop panel building, I'll use that with the big foot pump, because that's what I've got. You can get a handheld one, but I wanted to use the foot pump with multiple heads, as you can see, so I don't get the ones with handles on. I just had the foot pump, which, to be honest, hurts my knee, but I'd like an hydraulic pack. But anyway, that's a thin head. I'll stick him away now, so he's not coming with me next week. So for loads of your standard crimping, the majority of crimping you can do, you've got the G head. <laughs> it's actually called the... I can't read the label because it's foot, but it's got another name. I'll, I've got it on the other one. I use the G head. <laughs> This takes you up to 400 mil on your normal LV cables. So anything that's multi-strand copper, this will take you from, I think it's 16. This will take you from 10. Hang on. I ain't got a 10 mil die, but this does do from 10. I think I've got a 16 mil die. Up to 400 mil. Let me show you those. So there you go. There's the 16 mil dies for that. You can see how thick they are. That would definitely be a one crimper. That would crimp most of the barrel. And down here, you've got the four they're the 400 mil dies that's the maximum that it'll take on the g head so the g head goes up to 400 mil generally on like your swa awa single armored core stuff like that so that's your bread and butter head if you're going to buy one i bought the thin one first because i was doing a lot of panel building doing super flexors and tri rates so we wanted that one but recently i acquired this g head one off a retiring thingy but yeah it's a beast of a crimp, that. Beast of a die. So that's the G-head. That takes you for G-had. I'm going to call it a G-had. G-had, ma! Uh, Ducker Ducker Street. The next head after the G-had. And I like the separate heads because 
just gives you more flexibility. I don't like the handle tools, although I've used them for years. I like the fact that I can sneak that into somewhere tight like this lock and, and pump it. I'd like to see you get your uh, Milwaukee fucking toy crimpers in there, lads. Go on then. So that's what I use. So anyway, I put my G, I put my G hat away. Show you what else I've got. The next head after the G hat, which is now what it's called, is what I call the pin head, or they sometimes call it the U head. Uh, I'll put a picture of it here, here, if it's on YouTube. However, if it's on YouTube, I'll probably cut to the solar farm now. And as promised, that's the pin head because the pin comes out. But that's a big bastard. Because on the solar farm, we've rented one of those because that does you four hundred. To up to your 630, maybe 800, something like that. I can't remember because I've only ever used one once. With that also, we're getting the hydraulic pack, which I'll probably cut to now if we use it. There's the power pack. That's a beast. But it costs thousands of pounds. Hence why I have this bit here. I bought, the, I bought the foot pump. This will do all the three heads. Do the little head, the big head, and the other head. Self-relieving of the pressure. And it's got the quick connect. So this will do the U head, the pin head, the G head, the G head, and the thin head. It's all encompassing. However, it is... This does come up rather high, but I just do half strokes on it with my foot. So rather than bring it all the way up, I just take it half strokes because otherwise you fucking... You need to fall off. So I'll put the G head... Oh, in there that's ready to fucking rock and roll now keep the hose nice you're dealing with quite high hydraulic pressure you've got to be careful this goes to 700 bar 700 bar ten thousand pounds per square inch 700 bar is ridiculous pressure so make sure you look after your hose and stuff and your coupling and stuff because if that had a pinhole in it that that would cut your fingers off you know what i mean it's quite a jet that is that's 10 times a jet wash all the rest so you have to make sure you look after this, which is why I always carry it. So, yeah, I always carry it in its shipping container. I don't want the hose getting there and find out it's got a nick in it and fucking pissing hydraulic oil out. And just to add to that, I do have down here, I have a spare bottle of the hydraulic oil, the official chambray one, which is going to go with it because every time you change the head, you sometimes lose a bit of oil, so it's good to be able to top it up so I keep the, the official chambray uh, oil. It's only £15 a litre. So, yeah, I've got that. Then I've got a couple of other bits. This is the cutting head. This is quite an old one. I bought this off eBay for the last time I went to a solar farm. It is a chambray one, but the thing's gone, and it takes the chambray quick release. You just clonk it off lock, put your cable in, do it back up. That cuts up to that, which is about, I think it's about 63 mil, 50 mil. Go through copper, no problem. It's quite blunt. I've also got an absolute monster, one of these, and it is an absolute fucking monster that will cut 63 mil steel bar if this is on YouTube, I'll interject with that and put it in now and show you. Although it only works with the hydraulic kit I've got. The hydraulic foot pumps I've got, which I'll show you as well as part of this video on YouTube, um, need a compressor to run. So when you're on site, I've got that. If I want something a bit more sexy, I need a big compressor to make it run. But it certainly saves your foot pumping. So yeah, that's ready to rock and roll that. To the solar farm, I'll put that away. That might be the end of this video, who knows? That's it for now for your Instagram. I'll interject with this on YouTube, like I say, and I'll show you all the other kit I've got. I'll show you music next week and all that kind of thing. Don't do a lot of jointing, but I can do and have done. So I used to do massive armoureds. A bit like what Joint Tech does, but not as good as him, to be fair. But yeah, I'm going to go and do a bit of this. Bit old school, bit get me fit. So I will show the gear off and how it gets used now. You do all the crimping and stuff. But uh, for Instagram tonight, that's it. So fuck off and go to bed. You're fucking up late and your mum wants to know where you are. A little bit more. I also treat myself something which I might show. I always wanted one of these when I was jointing before. I used to borrow them or use other people's, but I always wanted a decent gas torch. So I bought this silver one. Silver one, which are the ones you get. It's got an auto clicker and all that shit. And it's got these heads. They're called soft flame heads. So they're cool. They're sucking a lot of air behind them or something like that. So that the flame's quite cold. But I bought the set. I fucked it off. The case it came in. The case looked good, but I fucked it off into a DeWalt case. I got myself a nice gas bottle. The good thing is, because I've got gas, I'm taking my fucking um, cad out with me, which is a little stove, so I can cook things on it, like tea and bacon and beans. Because on the solar farm, you fucking miles money, so I'm actually quite looking forward to doing a bit of camping. So I've got my little gas thing, and I've got my cooker on my van. There's the power pack. That's a beast. G head. And as promised, that's the pin head, because the pin comes out. But that's a big bastard.
Oh my God, it's Phil Dennis from Dennis Electrical Service doing some work. Is that domestic, Phil? No, but I did use a 25 mil double metal back bar. No! where I needed to give me the correct angle. Phil Dennis, are you still number one prior to electrical service in Nottingham? Yeah.